What up, what up, Wimbush here. And today I'm excited to show you the Raptor by Creality. Now, if you're watching my channel, maybe about five months ago, you saw me use the Creality Ferret Pro to do some scanning of my Dreamcast and even of myself, and I got some pretty good results. And so the people at Creality actually reached out, see if I wanted to try out their newest scanner, which is called the Raptor. So I said, absolutely. And so I wanted to try it out with two different scans because this scanner is actually capable of scanning in two different ways. And so the first way is the infrared scanner. And then the second way, which is supposed to be more precise, is the blue light scanner and so to get started we're going to go with the infrared scanner in which i'm going to scan my boxing glove here i'm going to be first scanning my boxing glove here and then i'm going to be scanning my xbox controller just so you can see how the different scanners work so inside of here i'm just going to do new folder hit ok and then i'm going to use infrared first that's what i'm going to do with my boxing glove here so for objects i'm going to do normal for size i'm going to do medium for feature i'm going to do texture and then i'm going to do high quality and even though I have this on a turntable, I'm not gonna turn the turntable on because I found that when I use my automatic turntable, sometimes it moved a little bit fast, like I can't adjust my settings on there. And so I have a manual turntable that I can manually turn it around in which if I have turntable off, I could go at any speed and I can move it back and forth. So with all these settings right here, I'm gonna click on scan. Okay, and once I do that, you can hear the fans on my laptop here starting to rev up. And if you look over in the top right hand side, you can see that we have our temperature, our frame rate, and everything's looking pretty reactive there inside of our viewport. Granted, I have OBS running here as well. So that's gonna be pulling a little bit of power off there. But the cool thing about this scanner is on the back hand side, there's an actual play button. So I don't have to worry about hitting the play button on a keyboard or the mouse or anything. I just put it up to my scan here. And I'm gonna click on the button on the back of it and there we go. So now I'm just gonna slowly turn this on the turntable. And you can see right there, we're actually getting really good results right there off the bat. So I wanna look on my left-hand side, just make sure I have my boxing glove in the viewport the entire time. And as I'm slowly scrolling this around, you see that we're getting pretty good results on there. Now you might notice that we're getting around 19 frames per second there on our scan. And that's because I have OBS running at the same time. If I didn't have OBS running, I usually get a pretty good frame rate around 45 frames per second, but it doesn't seem to matter in this case. We're still getting a pretty good scan there. So I'm just gonna keep rotating this around. I wanna make sure to get the bottom of my glove there. Really good results in here. So I think for the case of this tutorial, I'm gonna stick with this scan right here. So I'm gonna hit the play button on the back and once you're done with that, I'm gonna set this down. Then if I come over here, I'm gonna hit the stop button where it says complete scan. Select this and hit yes. So now that I have all my scans done there on my laptop, I'm over on my main desktop now. And this is the result that I got with my boxing glove there. So definitely needs some cleanup. Like I didn't clean this up down here, but for the infrared scanner, it's not bad. Like it picked up a lot of crevices and a lot of the nuances in there. And it gave us pretty good textures there i could probably get a better scan if i did it in better lighting conditions but if i look over at my mesh the mesh looks top notch like i mean if you look at that right there if i brought that into like substance painter or something like that it just actually repainted it myself i mean this model right here this is top notch and so for the texture probably could use a little bit of work there a little bit more touch up but for the actual mesh I would say this gave really good results. So now what I wanna try, because I've never been able to successfully scan this before. This is an Xbox Series X controller and it has a shiny surface on it. It has a little bit of matte on there, but there's a lot of reflective qualities on here. There's really no nicks or dings or anything. Everything is really smooth. And so unless you have like some type of spray paint that you put over there to get rid of the sheen or even put tracking dots on here this was really hard to track in the past but with the blue light i'm actually able to get a really good scan out of this also with the texture as well so what you see right here i have an old pill bottle that's right here that i'm going to prompt it up a little bit and i'm just going to place it right here like so and then i'm going to come over here to the software blue light resolution i'm going to do 0.1 to get the most detail as possible then I'm gonna click on scan. Now this is using the blue light. And as you can see, you actually have these bright lights right there. And if you look over here on my monitor, you can see that we have these laser lights pointing out there as well. Now this is actually gonna give us a way better scan than using the infrared. And I'll show you right now. So I'm gonna click play on this. 
like so. And as you can see, I didn't even move it and it's getting really good scan. Now you might notice that the tracking dots are starting to light up green and those are using the tracking dots that came with my Raptor. So you want to use those on your surface so it has some type of reference point at all times. And if you notice that if I come down like this to try to hit it at the side, it's not going to do it because it's going to say not enough markers. And so you always want to have your markers showing if you don't want to put it on your object itself. And the way that I get around that is I'll do a scan from this side and then I'll flip it over and I'll scan it on the other side and then I'll merge them together. That way I don't have to ruin my controller and waste any type of tracking dots. So I'll get as good a scan as I could get right now. And as you can see, we're getting a pretty good frame rate with the infrared or sorry, with the blue light. So if you look in the top corner, it's around 49 frames per second which is way better than what we were getting with the infrared. But let me just hit this from the angle a little bit as well. But from what I've seen inside the viewport, it pretty much picked up everything that it needs to pick up. I don't see it getting any better for this. So I'm gonna hit the play button on here. Then I'm gonna come back down here, hit the stop button to complete the scan. And I'm gonna click yes. And as you can see right here, we have a pretty good scan in here. Like we could go through and I can scan it again if I want to. And um, you can always merge these together like I was saying, but let's scan it from the bottom and see what kind of results we get. There we go. So now I'm gonna click on play and let's see what kind of scan we could get at the bottom, which I'm really impressed by because the bottom is pretty much all white and it's still able to pick it up in there. And I think for this sake, we're gonna stop it there. I'm gonna come down here Click complete scan, click yes. And it looks like we got pretty decent result there as well. So we can always go through and clean this up on the backside. So the thing I like about this station is even though the Raptor is not portable, like the Ferret Pro, I can still use it with my laptop so I could travel around with it, get the scans. And then when I need more power to actually bring this to fruition, I can then bring it over to my desktop where I can merge my different scans together and get better results. So I'm back on my desktop. This time I want to walk you through the steps of actually merging the Xbox controller together since we had to scan the top and the bottom separately. So if I'm looking right here, you can see this is the top in which if I come over here, I'm just going to rename this one top. So let me come over here, rename this one top. And if I click on this one, this one is going to be the bottom in which if I come here, hit rename, and I'm just going to name this one bottom. So I didn't bore you with all the cleanup and everything. I just went ahead and cleaned everything up. Just getting rid of the access polygons on there for the top and the bottom. So what I wanna show you is how we can actually merge these together and actually close all these gaps up. So what I'm gonna do is come over here on the right hand side where it says point cloud merging. I'm gonna select this. It's gonna bring up this window right here. What I could do is start hitting top and bottom and just see what auto brings up. Sometimes it gives a good job, sometimes it doesn't. So it looks like we're gonna to have to manually do this, which is perfect. So I'm gonna click on manual right here. And then where it says fixed window, I'm gonna click on top and then where it says float window, I'm gonna click on bottom. Now these are gonna coincide with each other because we wanna select some points that are kind of similar so it knows what exactly is what on each one of these items here. So I'm gonna flip this over so we have the bottom down this way and then we have the top up here. So what I like to do is start with the headphone jack. That's why I was trying to make sure that on both scans, I had a good clean area of the headphone jack. It says hold down the shift key on your keyboard and then left select on your mouse. So what we're gonna do is hold down the shift key, left select, and that's gonna leave a red dot right there. Let's make sure it's in the right place. It is. Then I'm gonna do the same thing over here. And you see that it left a red one here as well, in which it looks like it put it into a different area. So I'm gonna hold down the control, left select, and try that again. So there we go. I could probably get a little bit better. So you wanna make sure it's as close as possible matching that which there we go, I think that's a good spot. So now I'm gonna select this right here. And I'm just gonna go through and select each one of these areas. So what you're doing is you're making dots that are coinciding with each one of these mesh here. So whenever you go to merge it, it knows exactly what is what. So the only caveat is you wanna make sure you're getting it in the right position. Sometimes if you click in a blank area right there, it's gonna pass through and that's what you were seeing happening right there. 
So you just, it's always good to just go through in your 3D perspective and change it up. So I'm gonna pause it right here while I go through and select all these out. So I went ahead and I just added some more dots so I wouldn't bore you and everything. But this is my final result here. So if I look around this right here, you can see that I put it all along these lines right here to match up with everything there. And if we look at the top, placed a bunch of panels right here, or not panels, but dots up there as well. So you wanna have as many points as possible because what it's gonna do is combine it and kind of snap it together. So once you're happy with how your dot placements are, you wanna come down here to where it says start. I'm gonna hit on start and watch these merge together in which it's gonna give us our final results down here, which it looks like we got pretty decent results. Now I know it looks a little bit raggedy right there, but we can actually clean that up once we get back into the program. So if you're happy with how everything combined, you just come down here and hit yes. So once it's done optimizing, come back up here to the top left, we're gonna exit the merging, and this is gonna be our final result that we have here. So what I'm gonna do now is come right here where it says mesh settings. I'm gonna do auto because if you do too many faces, sometimes it's gonna crash the program. So I'm just gonna put it on auto. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna close it and I'm gonna fill the holes and then I'm gonna click on auto. And then I'm just gonna let this do its magic. So I'm gonna select this now and I'm just gonna let it go to work. So with everything merged together, this is the mesh, which I think looks pretty clean there. Of course, you could bring it into like Cinema 4D, Blender, ZBrush, you know, clean it up just a tad bit more, but also went along and added the texture as well, which we can also do with the blue light. So if I come over here to color, you can see that it picked up the texture pretty well on here. Like, you know, there are some discrepancies in there. Like if you look right there, it's probably good for like a prop if it's far away, maybe not good for a close up shop unless you went in here and actually really went through and painted it, maybe in like Substance Painter or something like that. But I say the results for this are actually pretty decent. These aren't bad at all. So again, here's the mesh, then here's with the color. So I wanna thank Creality for sending out the Raptor for me to check out. So I do have the Raptor and the Ferret Pro now, which I both are pretty good. I know I still use the Ferret Pro when I'm out there on a move since it can hook up with your cell phone. But I think if you wanna get something really high detailed, the Raptor is the way to go. So hopefully this video did help you out. And if you have any questions about the Raptor, leave them down below. I'll try my best to answer them if I can. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new. And until next time, stay fresh, keep creating, and I'll catch you in the next video. I'll see you soon. Take care.